Hey, welcome to another episode of the Not Scrum Dumb Podcast. I'm your co-host, Andriana Marshall, and that's my amazing co-host. Grand Scrum Master Scott. Greetings, everyone. Today, we're going to be talking about the inevitable, which is unplanned work. <laughs> I hate to start with grim news, but you can't stop unplanned work. When it comes to unplanned work, the first thing you have to do is decide if it's really urgent or not urgent. Everyone's going to tell you it's urgent, but you have to have some kind of intake mechanism. Typically you would go through the product owner, but I do think it's really important for a scrum master to understand that and be able to help the product owner in those types of situations. Scott, tell me, how do you handle that? That's a very good point. I'll give you my first time that happened. We all got in a room and to your point, I like your definition of urgent work or non-urgent. So we got in a room together and we asking ourselves, is this work critical for us to continue doing business or our customers? negatively impacted as a result of this and the product owner said yes scott scrum master scott it is urgent our website is down and customers can't get access to our website check <laughs> that's critical and urgent <laughs> and it's unplanned work so yeah we need to get the website back up and running so that customers won't be negatively impacted that was my first case. And I said, I will give you the second case. Now, after we got past that situation, now I've been through that scenario. And now if I go into a scrum team, that's part of the things I'm asking in the beginning. What is your rule of thumb in terms of if you have some unplanned work? How do you categorize that? And if they don't have something in place, I like to use something simple like a Likert scale. Whereas one is the lowest priority and five being like World War Three type of thing. It's we got to do something about it. Level five. So we number it as it comes in. That's a one. Put it in the product backlog. Basically, one through four goes into the product backlog. We make that decision as a scrum team. Ultimately, the product owner has the ultimate decision to make that happen, depending upon you know what it is and how it impacts our customers and the company. If it's a level five, as I gave the example before, that's going to go into the sprint. And then we're going to use the sprint retrospective to reflect on that and figure out, okay, if this happens again, what are we going to do about it? Andriana. I, I like how you broke down the priority. I think the other thing that's important to understand is reevaluating if Scrum is right for you. Maybe Kanban is more right for your team. If this is a reoccurring thing and it's high priority items, maybe that's just a different way that your team needs to approach work on a regular basis. I know a lot of times we talk about it only being for support and ops teams. Engineering teams can use this and they do use it effectively. So that's fine to make that kind of switch. The other thing that I've done in the past is leaving capacity. And typically, if there is no urgent work that comes in, what we'll do is the developers have that additional time to do something creative, which is fantastic for them. And then also you should have an on-call engineer. If your team isn't in software, having that on-call person where their job is to handle issues that come up, that's another way to handle unplanned work. Scott, do you have anything in terms of sprint scope where you've had to reevaluate what you're currently doing and basically re shift some things, take some things out? Oh, absolutely. Given the first example that I gave in terms of the website crashing, and it took basically the whole two week sprint and some to get that back up and running and mitigate all the things from that. Let's say it's not that. Let's say it's something small that's going to take maybe a day or so. We may lose one or two days of the sprint. We as a scrum team need to reset because we started to sprint off with a sprint goal. So now we need to talk and say, okay, we did this extra unplanned, urgent, work, critical work, how is that going to impact us getting to our sprint goal, if at all? We want to have that conversation sooner than later, depending upon where we are in the sprint. If this is like day two or day three, I'm still going to have that conversation. It, it, hopefully that unplanned works happen at the beginning of the sprint. <laughs> so we have plenty of time to inspect and adapt. But if it's like today and the sprint ends tomorrow, is it really worth meeting? We don't know. You just have to make that decision in real time. So those are some of the, the, the things that I'm thinking about as I navigate through, okay, how is this impacting our sprint scope, if at all? Andriana. Recently, I actually was the person asking for someone's sprint to change. <laughs> I know we all hate that, but yeah, sometimes you got to be that person. I had reviewed everything and I was like, oh no, this isn't what we were looking for. And then I finally got input from some other engineers and they were like, yeah, you're right. There is something wrong with this. We worked with the other team and their sprint started that day we met wow. and 
were like, hey, this needs to change. And thankfully, they were really open. They were like, it is the beginning of the sprint. And there is something I think we can remove. And they got back to us by the end of the day to remove that thing and replace it with our work, which was done at the end of their sprint, which was literally right when we needed it. They ended up getting done just in time for us to have that dashboard available. Sometimes you even have to be the person that's annoying another team about last minute work or unplanned work. That's a great, very great point. Great point. I love it. (laughs) All right. If you want to learn more from us, you can reach out to us on LinkedIn. We offer coaching programs, scrum.org, live classes. We also offer our own in the classes. You can check that out. Career, Agile, PMP. You can check those things out in, in AWS coming soon. You can check those things out in the description. Also, You can join our email list. We'll be sending exclusives to you guys coming soon. So hopefully you enjoy that. If you stayed until the end of this video, that means you have an attention span greater than a goldfish. Be legendary, everyone. Watch out for that unplanned work. (laughs) Be legendary, but not scrum dog.